Hello friends, welcome to a new lecture on nephrolithiasis. In the last class, we have learned about the etiology pathogenesis of nephrolithiasis. Right now, let us learn about the clinical features of nephrolithiasis. So, uh, the clinical features mainly depends upon where the stone is. So, if the stone, if this is the kidney, I have drawn in reverse way, right? Okay. If this is the kidney, if the stone grows in papillae or collecting system, okay, then it is asymptomatic. In such situations, it is det detected only in incidentally on radiograph. And if the stone enters the uteropelvic junction or ureter, okay, then it becomes symptomatic. Where in utero, sorry, not uretero, uretero pelvic junction or ureter, then it becomes symptomatic. Okay, once it uh, it reaches the ureter or uretero pelvic junction, then the stone gradually it comes down. So with the uh, you know, with the if if the stone is very small, okay, then the small stone can can easily traverse without any symptoms. If this is a large stone, a little bigger stone, then it can cause pain and bleeding. Okay, so there there is pain, and that pain will be first in uh, flanks, and then it gradually increases in in uh, severity, and then it becomes severe, and over next twenty to 30, sixty minutes, it becomes very severe. The pain will remain in the flanks itself or sometimes it will spread downwards anteriorly into the ipsilateral loin or sometimes in test with along it can also occur in testis and vulva if it's male if it's male if it can the pain also occurs in testis if it's female the pain may also occur in vulva okay so whenever the stone is in the ureter ureteric portion of the bladder here this can cause symptoms like frequency. Whenever the stone is here, it can cause symptoms like frequency or dysuria. These can be seen. Okay. So, this is how the patient presents with. The patient may present with frequency or dysuria. Sometimes he can be symptomatic with pain and bleeding. And this pain and ble pain may normally it starts in the loin and then over 10 to 20, uh, 20 to 60 minutes it can become severe and then sometimes it stays in the loin itself and sometimes it may radiate into the uh, radiate downwards and anteriorly and it can uh, sometimes uh, uh, it, uh, and one can feel pain either in the vulva or in the testicular area in males and females respectively. So this is how the invest clinical features. Uh, the patient presents with. What are the investigations? Investigations always do. Um, uh, serum levels should be done. Serum levels should be checked. The serum levels of all the types of chemicals which may which might cause stone, like serum calcium, serum phosphate, serum creatinine, serum uric acid. Sometimes parathyroid levels. Why? Because hyper parathyroidism may also predispose has stone formation. So all those serum levels should be uh, tested. And urine microscopy should be done. Why? Once you do urine microscopy, you can see different types of crystals. As I have said in my in the calcium phosphate, uh, cal sorry, uh, the calcium crystals, calcium crystals, calcium oxalate looks like a dumbbell shaped, whereas calcium dihydrate. Calcium oxalate monohydrate looks like dumbbell shaped. Calcium uh, oxalate dihydrate looks like envelope shaped. Whereas uric acid stones, they look small, round, multiple, and they can be yellow. And then sometimes the cysteine stone, it looks like a, you know, this shape, uh, pentagon. And uh, struvite stones, they can be has rectangular crystals. So based on the type of crystals, you can differentiate the type of stone. Okay, then you can do plain X-ray, KUB, why? To know the stones, to find the stones. If the stones are radio-opaque, most of the stones are radio-opaque. So radio-opaque stones can be found on plain X-ray, KUB. Then intravenous urogram is done to see the renal function. 
and sometimes retrograde pilography can be required okay to see the stones if the stones are radio lucent if radio opaque you can do you can find them through the x ray but if they are radio lucent then you will have to do ultrasound abdomen to find out the stones if they are radio lucent okay if the person has fever and chills a fever with chills and rigors burning micturition then think that the person may have uti because of stone stasis stone which lead which is leading to stasis of urine which will attract infections causing urinary tract infections in such cases you will have to uh, do uh, urine for microscopy and culture and sensitivity now how are you going to treat it the main treatment is medically you'll have to restrict the diet and treat the cause whatever the cause may be i have listed lots of causes you'll have to treat them so surgery for stone is necessary so surgery can be mainly of two types one pc one uh, eswl which is called as extra corporeal shock wave lithotripsy extra corporeal shock wave lithotripsy okay in this the person is put on a table okay the person will sit on a table will will sleep on a table will lie down on a table and there is a machine okay this will pass some radiations so if you see this machine so this will pass some radiations first into the water bath this is water bath and from there the radiations are passed into the person so this is the person and this is the kidney so with the help of these radiations the stone which is there this stone it gets fragmented because of these waves the stone will get fragmented and this stone will come down okay so this is mostly done if the size of the stone is less than 2.5 cm if the size of the stone is less than 2.5 cm then this can be attempted okay so uh, here no anesthesia is required and it is an outpatient procedure so it is really a good procedure and through this extra corporeal shock wave lithotripsy hard stones and also oxalate stones they can be eliminated hard stones and oxalate stones are eliminated if this is unsuccessful then you will have to do percutaneous nephrolithotomy so percutaneous nephrolithotomy is done if the stones are more than 2.5 cm or if the stone is multiple or if the stone is not responding to uh extra corporeal shock wave lithotripsy then we can do this percutaneous nephrolithotomy so what are we going to do here this is the kidney so under a c arm guidance first we will insert a needle percutaneously then through the needle you will pass a guide wire with the help of needle you will pass a guide wire and with the help of guide wire you will pass dilators okay Hmm. these di with the help of dilators again you will pass a nephroscope okay now nephroscope is passed so in the nephroscope you will just pass laser or ultrasonic waves through the nephroscope you will pass either laser or ultrasonic waves or laser or sometimes electrolytic hydraulic waves electro hydraulic waves are passed so with the help of these waves the stone which is there so that is fragmented and that will come down so this is how you do percutaneous nephrolithotomy so the main complication is hemorrhage and sometimes because you are passing many structures you are passing a, a needle first and then you will pass a guide wire and after passing a guide wire with the help of guide guide wire you will pass a dilator and gradually you will increase the size of dilators and then you will pass a nephroscope and through nephroscope if you are passing laser 
और निमेटिक और अल्ट्रासोनिक हाइड्रो इलेक्ट्रो हाइड्रोलिक फेव्स इन सच सिचुएशन यू आर पासिंग लॉर्ड्स ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर्स सो देर कैन बी कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ रप्चर ऑफ यूरेटर और परफोरेशन ऑफ द कलेक्टिंग डक्ट और परफोरेशन इंजुरी टू द किडनी स्ट्रक्चर्स सो दैट कैन ऑल्सो हैपन सो दीज दिस दीज आर द टू इम्पॉर्टेंट ट्रीटमेंट ऑप्शन विच आर अवेलेबल If these options fail, then you will have to do open surgery. If these fail, then we will have to do an open surgery. Okay. So in the open surgery, the first one is pyelolithotomy. Okay. What are you going to do in pyelolithotomy? You will just this is the kidney. You will just give an incision. so first uh, first uh, in the abdomen you will give a subcostal incision if this is the rib cage uh, you will give incision subcostally just below the costal margin so you will give a subcostal incision and then you will approach the kidney and in the kidney you will uh, open the renal pelvis and then you will remove the stone that is pyelolithotomy okay remove the stone and then once you have removed the stone you will remove the stone and you will close the incision so that is pyelolithotomy second extended pyelolithotomy here there is a this is the thing there is a stone which is present uh in the intrarenal pelvis the stone is present in the intrarenal pelvis so you will give an incision in the hilum between the pelvis and the kidney here and then you will remove the stone so in extended pyelolithotomy you are extending the incision till the uh, pelvis and hilum also okay so that is extended pyelolithotomy third nephrolithotomy in nephrolithotomy the stone is much more peripheral so if this is the thing the stone is somewhere in the deep calices if these are the calices okay the stone is somewhere in the deep calices in such situations you will give an incision in the broadly line which is an avascular line so incision is given in the broadly line okay in the avascular plane there is a broadly line here you give the incision and then you will remove the stone that is nephrolithotomy fourth is nephro pyelolithotomy okay in nephropyelolithotomy this is the kidney okay this is done for larger stones which are present both in intrarenal and extrarenal pelvis in such situations what you give are two two incisions one you give in broadly line which is in avascular zone and also you give one more incision in the renal pelvis and then you will remove the stone this is nephropyelolithotomy next fifth you can also do partial nephrectomy when do you do partial nephrectomy if this is the kidney and the stones are present at one pole maybe lower pole or maybe upper pole so then you can remove this uh, section of with stones and that is called as partial nephrectomy where you remove half of the kidney a pole of the kidney that is partial nephrectomy okay so these are the different types of uh, open surgeries which are available for um, stones so in order to prevent the recurrence we will have to investigate for metabolic disease if present any and also you will screen for infections so this is about the uh renal stones so thank you guys for watching my lecture if you have any doubts please comment it in the comment section if you feel something is inadequate in this lecture even then comment it in the comment section thank you for watching my lecture thank you